That is so cool. Alright, here we go. You guys hear me? Okay. Come on. Okay, hi guys, I'm CJ Gammon. I'm on the web platform team at Adobe. And um, I want to talk to you a little bit about the web as a platform and specifically a lot of new features that are making their way to the platform that are going to enhance capabilities specifically towards making mobile applications. So, one of the things um, I want to kind of throw a little disclaimer out here. A lot of this stuff is going to be really new, like cutting edge stuff that we're going to be talking about, so you're probably not going to be able to use it right away in your production environments, but it is kind of stuff that you want to be looking towards as to how you're going to be able to build your applications in the future. So just to kind of keep an eye on that, and um, there's a great resource out there. How many of you guys use caniuse.com? Okay, Ooh, awesome. Yeah, it's a great resource for um, a lot of this kind of information. Basically, they have tables telling you where different features are supported on what devices through what versions. Um, so I definitely recommend you use that before trying to try and get this stuff out. So, um, one of the key things I want to talk about is layout, and layout's been kind of a point of frustration for a lot of people for a long time on the web, mostly because there haven't been real specific tools for intentional layout. In the beginning, a lot of people were using tables, throwing some hacks together with floats, um, but fortunately, there are a lot of new specifications on the way that are going to allow people to really lay things out in the way they want to. Um, so, one of those is actually Flexbox. So Flexbox is ba basically allows you to create a flexible box, and I have an example of how this is going to work. Um, so we have this flexible box container, and it's containing all these different elements. And my key container contains the orange, the white, and the other orange element. And what I'm able to do is set an aspect ratio for these elements and how I want them to flex based on the size of the container. So you can see how this could be really useful um, for responsive designs, designing across devices, and you could even use media queries to adjust how these things are going to lay out on the page. A nice thing too is you can also nest flex boxes within each other. So you can see here we have this column, this row of columns within another element in my flex box. So you can create this grid-like layout within the element. So this is going to be a really useful, useful tool for layout on the web, and we could see an unprefixed version of this hitting browsers as soon as the end of the year. So that's going to be really cool. Um, viewport units are something that I think are really useful and awesome for building um, web applications. So the way that viewport units work is very similar to percentages, except they have a constant point of reference. So instead of the percentage using the container element to, for its sizing, what you're able to do is have this constant aspect ratio where you're using the viewport width or the viewport height of your device to actually resize content. And this can create nice harmony within, within the elements of your page, and that way it's constantly respecting the screen size of your device. So within some of these layout features that we have, a common theme kind of keeps popping up. And that's the idea of this um, static sizing or unknown size of your elements within the page, so we can have this height to our items. But typically on the web, you deal with vertically scrolling, so you don't necessarily know the height of your element, you have content inside of it that's going to continue to flow and maybe resize its container. But that might not always be the case moving forward. So regions is really helpful in this case where we're using viewport units or um, flexbox flex to size elements. What you can see here is we can actually have our content independent of our layout. So what we're doing here is you can see as, the, as this element resizes, it's actually continuing to flow through a different element that I can specify with, with um, CSS. So I can actually have my, my elements size and not have it auto height and have it flow into another container. And this is going to be really useful for these kinds of layout features. Another thing I want to talk about is um, font sizing. So how many of you guys use M's for font sizing? Is that like what you use, maybe pixels? Uh, okay, I don't know. Um, so M's have, are really useful for um, responsive font sizing um, because what you can do is actually size your fonts and then have a single point of reference when you want to batch resize them. So you can just have your media query access a single, the root element and basically change the font size all at the same time. So you can see how I can, I can instantly adjust all these fonts at once so that I get that common ratio between my fonts, but I don't have to go through and manually adjust each one. The problem with M's is that they cascade through the DOM, 
So if I want to resize just this one font size, all of its children are going to change size too. So this, you could see how you'd have to go through and readjust each of these font sizes um, just to be what you want them to be. The nice thing about REMS is that it fixes that problem. You can size all your fonts however you want and change them only on the root element. And that way, you don't have to worry about whether or not you're changing individual font sizes at once. You can go through and tweak individual ones and not have them actually adjust any other font sizes. So I could go through and, and tweak all my fonts however I want. So REMS are awesome. I totally recommend you guys using those for, um, for font sizing. And these are actually available in most modern browsers today. So you, you, can, you can start using them. Again, use can I use just to verify. But, um, but they're really useful. Graphics are another area where we're getting a lot of new capabilities on the web. So this is a really exciting space to see what's going on. Um, specifically, filters. Um, these have been available in iOS for some time now. And what they allow you to do is basically transition and create rich photo imaging effects. So if you're, if you're familiar with photography, this is kind of a familiar territory. But they allow you to do things like blur, drop, shadow, invert. Um, and brightness, and adjust these things. So it gives you the ability to use um, native-like transitions or rich graphical transitions, aside from simple opacity changes. And these are all hardware accelerated, which is awesome on mobile. So uh, another cool thing about filters is that you can actually combine them. So you can create cr even crazier, rich imaging effects, similar to popular photo applications you may have seen. Um, so here, I'm actually using a number of, of filters applied on top of each other to create this, this rich, old-style um, photo effect. Blend modes are another cool thing that's making their way to the web platform. So blend modes, if you're familiar with Photoshop, um, th these are, allow you to use layers and the pixel values of layers and interpolate those values based on various algorithms. So here's an example of blend modes being used in Canvas. And one thing to note, this is actually video that's playing in the background here. So if you watch the cars at the bottom, they're actually like driving on the street. But you can see how the different um, the text layers are blending in different ways with the background. And we've got particles and stuff. And this is going to be really useful for, um, for things like gaming and rich graphical effects on games. So things like particle flex, explosions, cool. And I, I'm sure there are tons of other really useful um, applications of this as well. So since we're talking about 2D Canvas, um, how many of you guys are making games in Canvas? Anybody? No one. One guy. OK. Interesting. Um, so, so, <laughs> so since we're talking about 2D Canvas, um, one of the big caveats of Canvas is the performance, right? So you want everything to perform really well on your different devices. And so I was kind of curious how things, how things were in the current state of of these different devices. So I put together a little test. This is my test of animating squares. Isn't it pretty? Um, so what I did was I actually ran this test on a bunch of different devices to see what the frame rate was. And I, I kind of, these were just devices I had sitting around my desk. And there's kind of an interesting trend here that you can hopefully make out. But um, so I, I, the iOS devices all got 60 frames per second. Um, and there's obviously an issue on Android. So Android suffered quite a bit. Um, the fortunate thing about this is, though, if you're focusing on games for our one guy back there, um, there, there's a fast Canvas plugin so that you can, and this is a PhoneGap plugin that you guys can go on GitHub and use today. But what it does is it actually takes your Canvas draw calls and puts it on an OpenGL, OpenGL layer on top of your web view so that you can get um, fast hardware, hardware accelerated performance on your Canvas um, in your Android application. So this is really cool if you're really focusing on rich um, like Canvas type games where you want high quality performance even across devices. Um, another thing I want to talk about um, just briefly is WebGL. So WebGL is a really low-level um, API that allows you to draw um, graphics hardware. It's a 3D API for really cool um, drawing capabilities. And well, I know BlackBerry, um, they've got this on their devices. The iOS has yet to launch um, a web view that actually supports it yet. Well, you can enable this. If you guys want to play around with it, you can um, enable this um, in iOS if, through private APIs. There's some blog posts out there. And if you want a reference, just hit me up after. Um, but you're not going to get in the App Store with that until, until they make it a public API. Um, also, on Android, if you go into um, 
Chrome beta and go to about flags, you can actually play with this today. So this is kind of a look at like where things are going. And I think WebGL is really cool because it adds a lot of potential for rich um, you know, hardware accelerated 3D graphics on, on, in, the, in Canvas. So um, here's a, a quick little demo I put together of, of how WebGL could work. So has anybody ever played Ski Free? Yeah, yeah? awesome, okay. I used to love this game. So uh, this is my recreation of Ski Free uh, using WebGL. And you can see we have our little skier flying around. It looks kind of 2D right now, but that's because I'm using an isometric uh, camera. But what you can actually do is um, toggle the camera so that you, know, you can get, f because it's full 3D, so you, I can get like a perspective view. I could even do like a first person camera view. And so imagine this running on your device, right? You can all, thanks. So, um, so th I think this is awesome and it creates a lot of cool potential, not only in gaming, but in, in just web graphics in general, the way people are going to approach building these kinds of things. Um, so the, we've talked about a few different kinds of technology, but um, I kind of want to give an example of how these things could work together. So what we did was we reached out to National Geographic, because they're known for rich graphical content and great stories, and we asked them if we could use some of their content to put together a demo. And what they delivered to us was this, this article they had um, called The Forest Giant. And it basically is a story about how they climbed and measure the world's second largest tree by volume called the president. And this tree's like 3,200 years old, so it's this massive, ridiculously large tree. And what they did was they built the first comprehensive photo of this tree. And they did this by photo merging all of these different photos they took together. So in order to simulate this, what we did was we created this WebGL experience that actually flies in all these different pieces into, the, into this massive image of the tree that they had. And this is sort of an intro to our application. And you'll see as it resolves, what it's going to do is bring us to a bunch of ar different articles that we could then choose from. So then I can go in and choose my article and have it fly in. And because, it, because this is a, a, like a touch application, what you can do is swipe through the different pages. And we're using viewport units to actually size our content here. And because we can, we were doing that, we need to know how our content's going to flow through, because we want it to resize appropriately on different devices. So we're actually using regions to flow the content through the different containers. And we can even interact with our content using things like transforms and other web technologies to really showcase how this stuff will work. You can also fly, fly through and unfold different content so we can use it in different ways and create these rich sort of interactions that you really don't associate with web applications. But I think as things move forward and as we see these kinds of technologies integrate more so with the web, that's the kind of thing that people are going to come to expect. Um, and I was actually so inspired by this article by the tree, with the tree that um, me and my family took a trip down to visit the president. So this is a picture of me and my daughter um, standing up under the president. She just turned one this week. Um, so, and it's really this awesome, thanks. <laughs> it's really this awesome, awe-inspiring structure, this massive tree. And that's kind of how I think about the web. Um, when, when we really take a step back and look at the, all the different ways and all the different places it's being used, it's really kind of crazy to think about all the power that this technology holds. And we can really contribute to that and really help it grow into whatever we want it to be. So um, with that, um, I'm done, but I really want to, if you guys have any questions or if you guys want to um, see some of these demos running on devices, just hit me up because I've got um, my hardware around. And, um, and if you guys even just want to talk about some of the features that you guys want to see in the web platform, um, let us know. Thanks. So let's give another round of applause to all of our speakers today. Yeah. Some, some absolutely fantastic content. Um, the highlight, I think, was throwing Joe off his game with giant pictures of his face. That was a real highlight for me. But I'm going to hand it over to this guy. Do you need time to, do you need time to set up?